from the beautiful to the monstrous, London is home to one of the biggest collections of street art in the world. One man who's been spraying the city's walls for more than 30 years is an artist known as Inky, and he's the man behind this well-known piece on West London's Portobello Road. This is the Lady of Portobello. It's a painting I did about four years ago now. It was done on scaffolding in three sections, and I couldn't finally see the picture until it was finished, so it was pretty tricky to do, but you had to line it up behind the scaffolding poles. So how did this whole street art graffiti world start for you? Take me back to the start. I started out doing illustration and logo design when I was a punk. I used to draw punk band logos on my school bag, and then uh, I saw graffiti in a book called Subway Art and started painting on a larger scale. Inky's agreed to take us on a tour of his favourite urban art in the city, and our first stop is an iconic building just around the corner. So this is Trellick Tower. It's a 60s architect, uh, Erna Goldfinger, designed it. He uh, annoyed Ian Fleming, the writer of James Bond's wife, so much that they named Goldfinger the bad guy after himself. He's a brutalist, modernist architect in the 60s. And then below here, we have one of the oldest halls of graffiti fame in West London, where you find all the classic graffiti. West London was one of the first places in the UK that graffiti started in, so it's kind of been a spiritual home in London with graffiti, and it's still to this day one of the biggest halls of fame. Some of London's best graffiti artists, and in fact some of the best artists from across the world, have plied their trade here at the Graffiti Hall of Fame. But their work doesn't usually last that long, only takes a week or two before someone paints over it, meaning it really is London's best revolving gallery. A tour of London's graffiti wouldn't be complete without dropping by a piece by Banksy, probably the city's most famous graffiti artist. This is a classic about 10 or 12 years old piece of Banksy, as you can see. Um, it's protected down with a plastic, ironically to stop vandalism against it, but it just shows the kind of classic graffiti style with his signature stencil style of an artist painting it. So it's one of my favourite pieces. What makes Banksy such a name that everyone talks about? Um, strategic placement of his work. So, you know, he'd do stuff by the Tate Modern or the Tate Britain, you know, or whatever. There's an event on, he'd have a painting outside it. So he was the first one who's really cleverly thought about where they were putting the paintings. Everyone before was just painting in, you know, certain places or just where they were walking down the street. He was going to places specifically to put pieces up. It's time to move to East London, where every wall seems to be a canvas. The once gritty underbelly of the city has become a creative playground. And while the area's notorious gangsters may be long gone, we still found ourselves being watched by one beady eye. This painting here is by Roa. He's an artist from Belgium, and he's well known for painting these black and white illustrations of animals all around the world. I was in Tahiti with him earlier in the summer. He painted a giant crab. He usually does an animal from the area where he goes to. So, for example, you get herons flying around London. So he's obviously seen one while he's here and paints that. So he, I think he's painted a squirrel down the road and a rat as well. From black and white to bold and bright, artist Mr Sens has become known for painting female faces, which are inspired by fashion photographs. He uses a technique of masking and nozzles and speed of hand to create these different thicknesses of line, and such as the fades through here are using astro caps, and this is using something called a stencil cap to get an extremely thin line. This is a painting by an artist called Shock One, who's a good friend of mine. He's a veteran of the UK graffiti scene, and it's part of a series of paintings which he's done called X-ray paintings, whereby he's cutting back the blacks and the colours to give an X-ray effect. <laughs> he's painted these around the world, including New York, and done a series of prints based on them as well. Our next stop is a masterclass in making the grotesque picturesque. But even Inky agrees the end result is a little bit creepy. So this is it's one of my favourite artists, Bon K. He's from a French crew called The Mental Vapours. And I'd describe this as kind of mutated photorealism. So he kind of paints stuff in a realistic style, but they're kind of mutated figurines. And you can see by the line work and the fade in here, he's been using like super detailed splatter caps. I'm putting all the intricate detail here on the can and the use of light, you get this effect, but it's a quite a disturbing photorealism. Before we knew it, we had just one more street left on our tour. 
So who have we got here? This is an artist called Ben Ein. He's one of the UK's most prolific street artists. Very famous for his alphabet streets around East London and also his font-based works such as these circus fonts and some of the other fonts you see on this street. Um, his work was the first presidential gift that David Cameron gave to Obama when he came into power. After Banksy, he's probably the second best well-known graffiti artist in the UK. And while we're talking politics, this piece on the other side of the road also has links to President Obama. So um, this painting here is done by uh, Jamie Reed and Shepard Fairey. Shepard Fairey is one of the most famous graffiti artists in the world and he was very well known for doing the Obama Hope campaign which helped him get elected. Yeah. Man, We've only seen a fraction of the street art that adorns the walls of this city, but as attitudes towards graffiti change, art lovers are flocking to see it, just as they would visit a gallery or a museum. Much of it is very skillful. Some of it carries a message, but there's no doubt it has become part of the London landscape in its own right. Sarah Morris, TRT World. Traveling, traveling. Through the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah.